Hi there, in this video we're going to be comparing the F-test with the T-test. And we've already sort of spoken about the sort of differences between these two tests. The T-test is normally used for when we're testing just a restriction on one particular variable or one particular coefficient, and the F-test is used for sort of multiple um, restrictions. So let's think about our sort of model. So we have sort of y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2. And let's say we're interested in testing for significance of our second variable, x2. Well, we'd sort of do that using a t-test. So we'd form a t-statistic, which was equal to the sort of estimated value of beta 2, which we get from our least squares, uh, applying our least squared estimators to our sample data. And then we would divide that through by the estimated standard error in beta 2 least squares. And under the null hypothesis, this is distributed as a sort of t distribution with m minus 2 degrees, or sorry, m minus 3 degrees of freedom here, because we've got three parameters, alpha, beta 1, and beta 2. Okay, so the idea here is that we look up in a t-table um, the critical value for this particular distribution, and then we would compare our t-statistic with that critical value. And if it was greater than that critical value, then we would reject the null hypothesis, which in this case is that beta 2 is equal to 0 in the population. But there is another way we could have tested for significance of x2, and that is by running an auxiliary regression, so y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1. Okay, so notice that this is a sort of restriction of the first model. In this second model, we have actually assumed that beta 2 is equal to 0. So if we sort of got the sum of square residuals from both of these cases, the top one would be the sum of square residuals under the unrestricted model, and the bottom one would be the sum of square residuals for the restricted case. Well, I think you can probably see where I'm going about this. We could actually form an F statistic from this information. How can we do that? Well, we could take the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model, uh, or sorry, for the restricted model, and then we would take off the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model, and then we need to compare that with something, so we compare that with the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted case. And we then need to sort of standardise this, so we need to divide the numerator by the number of restrictions, which in this case is just one, because we're just placing one restriction on a coefficient. And, and then we need to divide the bottom by the number of degrees of freedom in our original model, which is actually n minus 3. Then we know under the null hypothesis being true, then this is distributed like an f um, with 1, degrees of freedom for its first input, and n minus 3 degrees of freedom for its second input. And the idea here is that if we compare our sort of, if we look up the sort of critical value for this particular distribution, if our um, value which we get for our f statistic is greater than the critical value, then again we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so when I sort of frame it in this terms, it looks like we've got two tests to test the same thing really. Um, and so what do we gain by using the F-test versus the T-test or vice versa? Well, the answer is, in fact, nothing. It turns out that an F distribution with 1 degrees of freedom for its um, first input and M minus 3 degrees of freedom for its second input is, in fact, absolutely identical to T um, distribution squared with M minus 3 degrees of freedom. So, in fact... They are the F test and the T test are both variations on exactly the same thing. Indeed, for the same values of beta 2 and for the same sort of standard errors of beta 2, you will reject the sort of same um, values of the coefficient for the T test as you would if you were using an F test. So, normally, when we are just testing for significance of one particular coefficient, we use the t-test because there's nothing to be gained by using the f-test because it's just exactly the same thing. And the idea is that the t-test is simpler because we don't need to run this sort of secondary or auxiliary regression. Okay, in the next video, we're going to be talking about another way in which we can form the f-statistic in terms of r-squared. I'll see you then.